I'm gonna make this car carry this scooter. I've got a few choices, like I could do a roof rack, or I could do like a, on top of the boot, on top of the roof sort of thing. I'm gonna go with the tow ball carrier, but I don't have a tow ball. So the plan is to make the rack bolt onto the back of the car somehow. First thing I have to do is see how the car handles the weight of the scooter. So for a test, I've tied this piece of steel to the back of the tow point. I'm gonna stand on it. I weigh about 90 kilos, the scooter weighs about 75, 80, and so I'll see how much the suspension will sag, and then we'll know if it's just not gonna work. It doesn't seem like it... it doesn't drop too much. I was thought it might like sack out, but no, nah, it's pretty good. Holds the weight on the back, so onwards, next part of the design. If your car was built any time in the last 30 years, it should have a big fat bumper support under here that we can attach the tow ball to. So the first thing we'll do is pull the bumper off and we'll see what we've actually got structure wise to attach things to. So a lot of regular tow ball setups will just rely on hanging off this rear Rio. There's a bit more weight on this than normal because it's got a whole scooter sitting on it, not just the ball weight. So what I'm going to do is going to run some supports down under the car as far along as we can. So I think the best thing to attach to under here, and this will be the same for most cars, is going to be these bolts here, which is what hold the rear subframe in. So we'll bolt through this like normal and then have some kind of reinforcement that comes down and attaches to that end. So instead of it all sort of hanging off and twisting the Rio here, it's gonna like share the load through the whole back of the car and it should be well strong enough for the scooter and any bike or anything I wanna put on there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is worry about attaching to these subframe bolts. I've pulled one out. What I'm gonna use is a tube with a washer welded at the end of it. It's not really a washer, it's a piece I cut out. But it's just a tube with a disc on the end of it. Every time I make some of these, I make a whole bunch of them because I use them all the time. So basically, it's gonna be welded all the way around. But we'll be able to put our bolts through it if it wants to go through it. Come on. And so then we can put our socket or whatever we're using to do it up through the bottom and we can tighten them on to the bottom of the car. So this will give us a good mounting point, nice and solid to this bolt that we can then build off. So I'll bolt these onto the bottom of the car, we'll see how it looks, what sort of space we're working with, and then at the end we'll cut them to the length we need because at the moment they're super long. Right, I now have two solid removable mounting points to work from. So we're going to start measuring back from there, work out what we're going to do about attaching to this piece. So for the two pieces that come back, that was loud, I'm using some square RHS. I'm going to measure it and cut two bits that are a bit longer than I need, and then I can sort of hold them up and see how they're going to fit under the car and how they're all going to sit. I have my two pieces cut. Make sure you keep your bumper nearby because there's going to be a lot of taking it on and off to line it up. It's just sort of sitting there. This piece doesn't come exactly parallel. It's got a slightly upward angle to it. So what I'm going to do is I'll hold it up, I'll get some stuff underneath that jack stands hold in place, measure the angle that we have to cut on the end of it, and then we'll notch it to weld up nicely and match the piece of tube. So we've got our angle cut. When we hold the piece of tube up under the car and we hold the RHS flat against it, it comes out at exactly the angle we want to clear the bumper and everything. So what we're going to do now is this tube's about 40 millimeters, so we're going to come in half that, 20 millimeters. We're going to put a 20 millimeter mark in from the edge on each side. Once we've put our 20 millimeter, once we've put our 20 millimeter mark, we can line the edge of the mount up with it and trace around where we have to cut out to get the mount to fit. You could, in theory, just make these both straight and then play with the amount you notch out to adjust the angle. But if we cut it first, it makes it a lot easier to sort of sit it up there and actually make sure it's gonna be sitting at the angle we want it to sit at and it's all gonna fit. So that's our tube marked on both sides. If you're gonna do a lot of these, you'd set up a hole saw to come in and cut this angle out. Because I'm only doing two, I'm just gonna cut it out with the grinder. So I'll do that quickly and then we'll look at the next step. Okay, so finish notching out our piece. Our tube fits in it nicely now to weld it. We've got our angle that we set, actually goes, goes this way. We've got our angle that we set. So what I'm gonna do now is we'll put it back under the car, work out what height we actually have to set it at, and then we'll tack it, and then we'll, yeah, see if it sticks out in the right place or not. We're all welded up now, we'll see how it fits. All right, to be honest, probably could have come up a bit more of an angle. There's still like a two finger gap there, especially with the flex in the bumper. But I think it's close enough, we'll live with it. It's still higher than the exhaust hangs down, so we're not losing any ground clearance. And plus, we've got like a bunch of stuff to build on top of it for the scooter still, so I think that'll be good. Now on the other side, which is slightly more complicated. So these are our two length pieces. 
this is the off cut that I notched and welded on there. So, <laughs> whoops, it's only tacked on, but I'll cut that off and then we'll be back in a minute. Okay, we're back with the correct piece of steel welded on this time. I'll bolt this on, we'll see how it fits. I've um, tightened up the gap here a little bit. I've taken that opportunity, so maybe that's why it was wrong in the first place, so I could redo the gap to be a bit tighter. Because I don't actually mind if it's even pushing on this a little bit, holding the lip up, because the more ground clearance, the better, even though the exhaust is lower. But what are you? Alright, that's more like it now. It's just sort of touching the, the, the bumper. Now we're ready to move on to the other side. So here's where you see my problem. This one, we have a straight line down to the subframe bolt. This side, we have a straight line like through the muffler into the subframe bolt. So what we're going to do on this end is the, the bolt's taken out. So we've got our, we'll have our tube hanging down here we have to have a small angled piece across and then we can come down. So where our joint is going to be, you could tube bend this and use like the roll cage. Yeah, I'm not going to bother doing all that. It'll be fine. Cut and weld it at an angle and then we'll just plate the bend. So I think what I'll do to start off with is I'll make the same as this side and then we'll cut it once it's on and we see where we want to cut it. So repeat angle. <coughs> Alright, got to remember it's hot this time. <laughs> At least this time it's so hot that it's smoking, so I should be able to see that it's hot. Okay, this one actually sits up a little bit higher than the other one, which is not an issue because we have to cut and weld this still. This one's actually going to be slightly different to the other side, because on this side we could come through this gap here, and we're clearing the subframe, and we're clearing the lower control arm. But on this side, because we're coming over at an angle, it's welded further down on the tube on the other side because we have to go over the subframe. So I've given it only like a millimetre clearance there. I've gotten it as high as I can. We've given it a good bit of clearance to the muffler because remember, exhausts are rubber mounted and they do move when you're driving, so they want to make it banging on the exhaust the whole time. But what we'll do now is I'll get the angle finder thing and we'll put it on here and work out what angle we have to cut this at to get it to come here and then come straight out the back of the car. At the same time as making that angle change there, we can make any fine adjustment to how high up and down we want it to be. So the reason we're not too worried about the height difference just yet is because we do have to adjust it there. Stuff like this is never going to be perfect because every time you cut and weld it, you get a compound error. So if the angle that the thing is bolted to the body is on is off by two degrees, and then the angle you weld it, cut it at is off by two degrees, and the angle you weld it on at is off by two degrees, two degrees each time is a fair enough measurement to be off by, but because we've done it three times, we're now off by six degrees, which is like a large amount. So as you're working from a point out, you're gonna have to make little changes and adjustments because that's just how fabricating stuff works. No matter how careful you try, there's always gonna be a tiny error, and that tiny error will compound as you work to get bigger and bigger. So you just need to make allowances to compensate for it further down the track. So here's our position here where I've measured the angle we have to change. I've put this little triangle, so I know I have to bend it that way, and this is where I have to make the mark. I measured it, it has to be 17 degrees, so what I'm going to do is mark an angle at half of that, so 8.5 degrees, and that way when we cut it, we take this piece off and flip it over and weld it back on, we'll end up with our 17 degrees without having like a weird half-half joint. So I'll mark 8.5 degrees, we'll cut it, and then I'll explain that better probably. <laughs> so this is our 8.5 degree angle cut now. If I rotate this piece, when we put it back together, we get 8.5 plus 8.5, which gives us our 17 degrees. The reason I couldn't just cut this off straight and then cut this at the full 17 degrees is because this is now a cross section, this is actually a rectangle and not a square. And so if I flip this piece over and show you the square end of it, it's not as obvious because it's not a big angle, but you can see if I line them up now, there's actually an overhang on the side here because this piece is actually wider. So by halving our angle and cutting it into both pieces, you get a much nicer finished product because it doesn't have edges hanging over. It's better to weld because everything matches up properly and it's just a nicer looking thing in the end. So I'll tack those together, we'll put on the car and see how the angle looks. Okay, so I have the two pieces sitting on the car now. Where this one is tacked, I can see that there's a gap here. So this pipe is exactly level and it's straight. So now when they're resting on there, I know that they're both sitting at the same height. And so you can see here that there's a slight gap at the top. So what I'll do is I'll take it apart now and just cut a tiny little, come on camera, just cut a tiny little amount out of that. 
close that gap up and then weld it back together again. And then we should be perfectly level on each side. Okay, that's welded solid now. They're both sitting even, it all looks good. We're gonna take the bumper back off and start deciding how we're gonna attach it to the bumper reinforcement underneath. Okay, so lining it up with the Rio, the dodgiest, simplest way I could think to do this is put a piece of threaded rod through there and through the Rio. We're not gonna do that. <laughs> I want to avoid any kind of drilling into this. So I could even weld like a tube on here with a thread in it and you put a bolt through there. But I don't want to do any cutting or welding through this piece. So what I want is like a little eyelet or something out the side here that can then go up and bolt to the Rio. So this part here is taking most of the load. Like if you think of this as a big long lever arm, it's pushing down on this side and so we're sort of pulling down on this one and pushing up on that one a little bit. So these two here are helping transfer the load, but they're mainly being pushed into the car, so they don't need to be super strong. These ones here are where it's going to be hanging down. So what I'm thinking is like a little nut or something out the side here with a tube and a piece to hang down and bolt onto it. So I'm going to go and do some cutting and I'll start welding some bits together. And as I decide what I'm doing whilst I'm doing it, I'll then show you what I did. Okay, so here's the plan. I don't want to have to bolt anything permanent, or uh, bolt temporarily in and out of this to add and remove that. Those bolts under there are really easy to get to under the car because the car's high. But when it's low it won't be, but either way nothing will be easy when it's low. That's easy enough to get to. I don't want to have to bolt up here because it's like up inside the bumper. So I've cut out a bunch of these pieces that have this notch in them. And they fit up against that lip there and will be welded on. And then in the bottom of these I'll put a thread and then we'll weld a collar onto here. So these will hang down flush with the bottom of the bumper and then when we're removing the tow ball we just bolt in and out of the bottom of these. So what I'll do now is I'll remove the Rio and strip the paint off where I have to weld it. I don't want to strip it when it's on the car because I want to get like iron filings and stuff in the paint. So we'll strip it off, we'll tack these on and then we'll see how it looks and if we see any problems. And I'll test fit the bumper as well. Okay, so there's our two drop down pieces. This one's on the back side instead of the front. I was going to just move this tab, but it's easy enough to just put on the back. They're spaced away from the edges, so I've got room to add. Stop dropping it. So I've got room to add a reinforcing plate down the side because I want to put a little plate on each one here to sort of spread the load of where the real weight is hanging. I'm just going to make up that reinforcing plate now. So you can cut it out with an angle grinder, but I'm going to cut it on a plasma cutter because I have the plasma cutter. So these bits finished cutting out, the black stuff that's on mild steel when you get it's called mill scale. It's good for preventing rust and it's a nice surface finish and stuff. You can weld through it but it makes the welds a bit more brittle because it sort of introduces foreign crap into them. So for something like this where I want a good strong weld, I've ground the mill scale off around where I'm welding. So it looks a bit crap with the grinder marks in it, but most of that will disappear when it's painted. So I've got the reinforcement pieces tacked on. The next piece we need is the eyelet for the bolt. Now I'm not just going to weld a washer on here because it'll be too flimsy. So what I'm going to do is I've got a solid piece of bar stock here. I'm going to make this into, I guess, like super thick washers that are sort of five mil thick. Then they can weld onto the side here and I'll weld some little reinforcements. So over to the lathe, we'll start drilling and cutting this up. So just done on the lathe, there's our super fat washers that we'll weld onto here. This is the Rio off the back of the car. 
There's also these ones which fit inside these tubes and these have a thread in the end of them. So once these are welded together, they'll bolt together. So I've got to weld all these in. We'll put this back on the car and then we'll position these in the right place. All right, so we've got the Rio bolted back to the car. These are welded on a bit more solid now, but there is reinforcement plates going to add to these. The little threaded washers in the end, I put two chamfers on there, so I had a groove to get heaps of weld penetration. There's also holes drilled through the outer tube so I could weld into the tube on the inside, because that's a pretty critical joint, so this is probably pretty over the top, but I can be happy knowing it's not going to pull the inserts out. So we'll bolt up the bottom bits and get our two mount washers mounted. Right, so our bottom piece is bolted back underneath. What I do now is our washers that we have to weld on, I can bolt these into place. Once those are bolted in place now, I can tack it to this piece and then remove it and weld it completely. And we know that they're going to line up exactly. So this is the last opportunity to make any tiny little adjustment to the angle of it. So I'll bolt the other one on. We'll get them both exactly right. Final adjustment. It has to be right. And then tack them in place, pull them off, weld them, reinforce them, do whatever else we need to do. Okay, so I've just welded those a bit more solid and welded these reinforcements on a bit more. We're ready for the stand test. That's good. There's no big flex or anything in it. Remember the scooter is supported by two of these and it weighs less than I do, but I reckon that's pretty good. I will be um, adding another reinforcement to the center toe point, I've decided later, but this is solid, so weld the other side next. <laughs> okay, it's dark now, but also I need to actually work out what the scooter is going to sit in. So the normal bike racks that you buy have like a C channel for the wheels to go in. I'm going to make three bars that it sort of rolls in. I'm going to make it out of aluminium. So I'm going with aluminium because it's a lot lighter and it just looks nicer and I just like working with it. I'm going to use three pieces of this stuff. It's pretty thick. I think it should definitely be well strong enough. These pieces are 3.2 meters long, so I'm going to make the rack 1.6 so I can get two lengths out of this and I'll have to pull another piece up from another piece down from up there to make the top one. And I'll just make like a triangle bracket on the plasma cutter to weld them together. And then this piece, I'll bolt it onto here, but I think I'll put a few holes, maybe. I'll have to think about it, because I'd like to be able to slide it along. Maybe. We'll see. So, I'm going to make the little channel first, and then decide what I'm going to do. Alright, so now that all the tubes are cut to length, I need a mount for them. What I need is a piece that looks exactly like this, but these holes need to be slightly bigger, and it needs one hole less on the end. So, I'm going to cut that out now. This aluminium is thinner than I want it to be, so I'd like some thicker stuff. This is what I've got. What I'll need to do is weld in some more reinforcements. So it's a little bit more work to make it out of the thinner stuff, but that's what I have. So I'll cut this one out and see if it fits on the first go. I don't know what this one was. This was not an attempt. <laughs> okay, so there's the cutout piece. I haven't deburred it yet. What'll happen is this will go on here, and then I'll put bolts through it. There'll be another one on that side, another one, and another one, and then some joiners. The reason I did this is I can actually put it together, work out exactly where the scooter will sit to not hit the bumper. And the other thing is if I ever want to put on a different a bike with like fat tires or if I want to build a basket or anything, I can just make everything slot on and off like attachments. So if I wanted to make a bicycle rack or a yeah a box or any other sort of thing, I'll put it on there. So this piece, which ended I shave the end off, should fit through these holes. Should fit through the holes? Come on. Okay, <laughs> the first one I cut out, I mean, this is the first one. The other one didn't fit. But basically... One through there, one through the top, one through there. Then I should have my nice ramp section to put the scooter in. So I'll cut out four more of these. And then I think I should be right to like G-clamp it together and work out exactly where it needs to sit. Or might weld it first. Stay tuned. I'll cut the next couple out and then we'll have a look. It's getting a bit dark, but we'll give it a quick test fit. Okay, so it's good to get a look at how it all sits now. This is definitely not ready to put the scooter on yet, so what I'm going to do is try and put the scooter on it. I've slid these tubes that way further, so there's less chance of bending them, because once they've got like more reinforcing pieces, it'll be the three of them, but at the moment it's just the bottom one. We'll try and put the scooter on it and see if I bend one of the tubes or not. Obviously, it's going to have some kind of ramp or something. Let's get this 
stuck on something. That's right. Just think of it as testing for the angle I have to build the actual ramp at. To open the boot of the car. Stay. <laughs> All right, well, that's kind of annoying. I set this height here to be as tall as I could get it to give it like as much stability, and I thought that the lowest hanging bit that I saw were the two brake cables under there, so I made it to match those, but the section here where the kickstand sits down is very slightly lower which means these pieces are too tall and they hit it so that's annoying I have to cut out four new ones of these and make them like probably make them 25 mil shorter to give it heaps of clearance so I guess I'll go recut all those these ones can go in the aluminium recycling and I'll try again I'm surprised I made that mistake with these because I measured it all pretty carefully looking at it closer the reason that happened is because the brake line that I was using as the lowest point moves with the wheel Whereas the bit of the stand that was hitting this, when the scooter is sitting there on the center stand, the rear suspension is drooped, so that piece does have enough clearance, but once the weight of the scooter is on, it actually drops down lower. So I'll have to put on the ground, remeasure it, make these shorter, and then we'll try it again, see if I can get it on the rack without making a ramp. All right, attempt two. There's an original one on the bottom and the newer one. So we're about, well, we're exactly 40 millimeters shorter. Chuck it on, try again. Looks good so far. Cool. Perfect. That's a lot better. So, at the moment it's a bit sketchy with all the weight on the bottom tube, but there'll be more U pieces to join them all together. But other than that, I might have to bolt them out a little bit further just to get the handlebar away from the spoiler. But other than that, looks pretty good. I reckon that's gonna work. Right, so I've just tacked this together. It's not fully welded and there's a heap of reinforcements. I'm gonna like fill these in with plate. I'm very impressed how rigid this is. I thought this would like flop this way heaps. So if I put it on the bottom tube and push it down. But yeah, no, it's rigid as. That's pretty good. All right, so if you've been watching any of my other videos, you'll know I'm aiming for 10,000 subscribers. I'm doing one video a week till I get there. That's the big goal. So if you can help me out with that, that'd be really good. I'm going to leave this for this video because this video is getting pretty long and the setback I had having to recut all these out has put me, made it take a bit longer. But make sure you subscribe, you can keep up when I put the next update up. I'll be working on this straight away so expect the next update either as next week upload or the week after. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you turn the bell on. Thanks so much for watching. Any comments, leave them below. I know everyone's going to say they need to reinforce it. I know I need to reinforce it. I'm getting there. It'll be the last bit at all the gussets. But thanks very much. See everyone in the next video and goodbye.